I'll call this special regional council meeting to order. Please be advised that tonight's meeting is available for the public to attend virtually, is being streamed and recorded. Can I get a motion please to adopt the agenda? Moved by Councillor Andrew, seconded by Councillor Roper. All those in favor? Carried. Delegations, Fort Nelson Chamber of Commerce. My pleasure to uh, welcome Mrs. Bev Vandersteen, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. Mrs. Thank Vandersteen. You. Thank you very much, Mayor Foster. And um, I'd just like to actually take a moment to thank Council for meeting with me in a special meeting. I know this takes away from your guys' time as well. So I do appreciate that. Oh, I did push talk. Um, and uh, before I get started, I do want to apologize. I've left my cell phone on. I have a bit of a family crisis happening in Ontario right now. Um, so I will have to answer it and leave if it, if it goes off. So apologies, but fingers crossed. Um, so you have the Visitor Information Centre report in front of you. Uh, once again, COVID presented some challenges this year. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew three years we'd be doing this again or still? Um, we did come in under budget to buy just a little over $4,000, um, which uh, we're asking to just be rolled over into the next, into the 2022 budget. Um, and we're not asking for any increases uh, in 2022. Canvas Summer Jobs provided a little bit of extra funding this year, which uh, contributed to that surplus. And uh, we've applied again for Canvas Summer Jobs moving forward for the 2022 season. Um, I provided a couple of graphs and I think Jaylene has them. So the first one is the one I bring every year. <coughs> well, anyway. Um, clearly, when you've, you've got the graph in front of you as well in your package, so mm -hmm. um, we are clearly still way down from normal, um, but we definitely saw a jump in August when the borders opened. Um, we reached almost 50% of a normal year in August, I'll take right now. Um, but it's the second graph that um, I thought I would add in because it's a little bit interesting. Um, it's taking a look at the visitors by origin. Um, so clearly related to COVID as well, because with the borders being shut down, we definitely couldn't see uh, travelers from outside of the, the country. But what's interesting to me is when you look at um, 2019 over 2021 and just the difference in, in domestic visitors, I think we have what this says to me is we have a really strong potential for attracting domestic visitors. So from British Columbia and from Canada. Um, so I just thought that was, that was an interesting uh, set of numbers. Um, and I think that asking government to um, consider offering a tax rebate, uh, sort of like we've, we've seen being offered in Ontario to encourage local, local traffic um, would be a, a good idea. So I don't know if that's something council would like to consider, but um, I think that is something we could encourage the BC government to do as well. And then um, the last slide is just for fun. Uh, these are some of the comments that have been left at the visitor center over the season. And I thought it was fun to see, um, to see our home through somebody else's eyes. And uh, so this slide was not in your package because I just threw it together this <coughs> afternoon. Um, but uh, some really interesting comments, including, I like the air. You know, of course, of course, comments about, you know, wildlife and, and things like that as well. And um, I picked comments that were less about the visitor center and, and the services they found there, more about the region. Um, but yeah, I personally really like the, I like the air. And it, you know, we have that beautiful, crisp, clean air. Um, talked about uh, a couple of them about fall colors and scenery. Highway number 97, tripping. <laughs> right? So um, it's just, we need to take the time to, to see that through other people's eyes because we really do have a spectacular region and we really can, um, can sell it. So that's my visitor center report. You have the, the budget and everything in front of you. I would love a pre-approval, but I also know how you feel about that. So <laughs> I will leave that firmly in your hands. 
Well, thank you, Ms. Vandersteen, and uh, we really appreciate that. You know, uh, when we had those uh, tourists from Asia, it was really surprising about the things that they mentioned that we never even give any thought to. And uh, one of them was, uh, was uh, a fire outside. And I mean, this doesn't even cross our minds. And uh, of course, in Hong Kong and some of those uh, countries, you're not allowed to have outdoor fires. Um, and the Northern Lights and so many other things, the wildlife we have here, um, First Nations, um, and all, all the things that from living here, like fresh air, we, we take for granted. It's just one of those things we have on a daily basis. And uh, you're right, you know, sometimes we don't see what, what, uh, what good things we have here compared to other places. Uh, any other comments for Ms. Vandersteen? Go ahead. So you said that you were under budget by $4,000. And so I just wanna confirm that you're not reducing your ask for 2022 by that $4,000? Yes, we'll roll that over. I'm not reducing my total budget ask, but we'll roll that 40, it's almost $4,500. We'll roll that into the budget. So it'll decrease what the NRM is actually. Paying. It will decrease. Yes. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mrs. Vandersteen? Very well, hearing none. Uh, Tourism Advisory Committee, Mrs. Vandersteen. Uh, committee update. Yeah, so we've had a we've had a good year actually. We got to, as I was putting together this report, we were um, meeting at the at the last meeting. I was I shouldn't I shouldn't say this. I was pleasantly surprised with how much we actually got done over the course of the year. Um, it's given COVID um, and the fact that we couldn't get together or meet in person. Um, so I do want to um, take the time to thank the Tourism Advisory Committee. Uh, both our past members and our new members, because we, uh, in 2021, we had that first term changeover. So we have some new members, um, Heather Maga, <laughs> Abigail Neville, Pablo, thanks Pablo for coming, and um, Heather has joined us online as well. And Lucretia Bain has joined the committee. So um, really great, great to see that and uh, really appreciate them coming on. Um, so you again have my report, but uh, I'd like to kind of go over a few things. So as I noted in the report, we have a couple of requests regarding recruitment to the committee. Um, and we would like to, so I guess the first one is we'd like to change the time of year that the terms expire. Right now, because we started in June, the terms expired in June. Um, that wasn't a really great time to try and recruit or to get invitations out or to have people come on because um, we ended up with a couple of meetings that didn't have quorum because people were on vacation and doing those kinds of things. And so they couldn't really get settled into the community, into the committee quickly. Uh, so we'd like to move that um, to January to actually run a calendar year, um, which then gives NRM staff the ability to uh, put out those invitations in the fall and for us to get people up and started in January when they could kind of get a feel for things prior to our tourism season starting. And then kind of along those lines, we're also asking council for the ability to recruit and approve committee members during the term. Um, and I think that the, the premise here is that we would still have a normal invitation and recruiting process when the term rolls over and can, that would still come to council for approval. However, if, um, if we notice that there's a specific in the terms of reference, a specific um, area not being represented for instance hospitality if we don't have anybody from the restaurant business that we have the ability during the term to go out and actually recruit for that position and i think it just um it, that's pretty common with boards and committees it places trust with the committee um and it values the person being recruited because we we can go to them and 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 demonstrate that we have we see a value for them joining us uh flipping the page um, so I'll move on to the budget. I don't, do you want to talk about things as we go, or you want me to go through this all first? Uh, I think go through all of them first. I'm making some notes here and then we can, we can discuss them after your report here. Okay. Um, so as noted in the report as well, we didn't use any of the budget 2021. Um, that was just a factor of COVID again. Uh, the decision had been made by the committee to not meet in person uh, this year. So we're requesting that budget just be carried over again. And one, one year soon, we'll be able to use it and actually be in person. Um, 
along with the, the tourism uh, strategy. So the committee, um, along with other community representative, representatives participated in the development of the draft strategic plan. We believe it's important to have a strategy to move us in a planned way to develop and encourage tourism. Um, if this strategy is adopted, we would like to see the committee work towards becoming more action oriented than strictly advisory. Uh, under the tourism attraction resources portion of the report, um, tourism resources have continued to be a big large part of the TAC's conversation. Um, NRM staff is doing an incredible job. Um, however, tourism needs to have a bigger focus and more direct capacity directed at it. Um, it needs to have a focus similar to what we saw with the forestry rejuvenation process that the municipality went through. And, um, and to what we saw many years ago, you know, when we had a really active tourism community and we had Trudy Bennett and we had Linda Wallace and, and um, they were very active in promoting tourism in the Northern Rockies. And I think we need to, to make a step back that direction. And then I had a couple of other items that we were asking council to consider. Um, and we're asking for council to consider approving motions for these. Um, the first is that there has been a rumor circulating that the hot springs may be shut down due to um, the hot water FISA, which is the snail. And um, I did speak to the park operator and he has had no indication of that. <coughs> However, um, despite that, we, cut, we believe it's important to ensure that we ask the question and that we're on top of this and that, um, um, that we make sure our views around, around the hot springs are known. Um, and so I do wanna stress that this is a rumor only, we've had no confirmation from anybody, but we would like to just make sure that we're aware of it ahead of time rather than trying to react to it if it does happen. Um, and then the second request to council is to approve a letter to BC Parks rec requesting a representative be appointed to the committee, both to provide information to us and uh, to allow feedback from us um, because so much of our region is within the parks territory. Uh, I would like to say that Chelsea has been really approachable from parks um, and we appreciate her willingness to have us reach out to her. That certainly has been there, um, but we think that it would be more effective to have a formal relationship with BC Parks and actually have um, the minister appoint somebody to the committee. Um, down a little bit lower, I'm gonna cut it because you've read it, so I'm not gonna repeat <coughs> it in the, in the report. Um, we uh, have identified, going back to that person, um, we also identified the potential of doing a survey or an awareness campaign um, to understand the value of tourism and to educate the community on the value of tourism. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we can hire a summer student to take on that project through the Canada Summer Jobs Funding um, this summer, but um, I do think it's something that uh, if we can't do that through those kinds of means that should be looked at from a uh, staff capacity uh, situation. And that is it for me. Thank you. Except for questions. So um, during presentations, we collect information here. And uh, what I'm going to do is refer those requests that you made to uh, administration for a report to us uh, on all those things. And uh, to come back at a later date, certainly appreciate all the work the Tourist Advisory Committee does uh, for the community and, uh, and how they've emphasized the importance of tourism for the economy of the Northern Rockies. Uh, any other? Comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Penny. A couple, thank you very much. Beth, great job. <coughs> Sorry for my, excuse my tardiness. <laughs> Tried to get here. I left to come here early and ended up late, so it didn't work out. Such a long commute. Um, <clears throat> I just want to really uh, put a really big thank you to everybody that's been involved in this Tourism Advisory Committee. Uh, and sitting back and, and going through this strategy plan here and going back over everything that we have accomplished to be honest it, it seemed like it took so long to get it up and going and then COVID came and it was it was really difficult and sitting back and reflecting um, it really made me happy with how much we have accomplished and I think that going forward we are the one thing she spoke about about uh, an education um, program survey uh, that's one thing that uh, we brought forward in the last meeting, and I'm really hoping that we can move forward forward with it soon. 
I really think that we need to get all our businesses in Fort Nelson or in Northern Rockies to realize how much of their income is already cur currently coming from tourism. Things that they'd never even would imagine, whether it's a, a bulk station selling fuel to up highway businesses that make their sole income from tourism, whether it's just travelers getting to Alaska or if it's actually you know coming and staying here, but either way, their businesses don't exist without tourism. So, um, or it could be parts from bumper to bumper to keep their equipment running. Whatever it may be, we need to make sure that people realize how much is coming from, from tourism. So that's the hope with this education process and a, and a survey that I would want to get together, so. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Barry, uh, do we, oh, sorry, uh, Councilor Girls, go ahead. Uh, could you just, just speak a little bit about the diff how you see the difference between an advisory committee and an action committee? Because like under the community charter, I think, a local government can have three types of committees and an action committee isn't one of them. So I'm just wondering, because an advisory committee is, and that's what this committee is now as an advisory committee. So when you say you would like to move to an action committee, can you just describe for me what differences you see between the two? Um, I think uh, primarily just being um, empowered to take some, some actions ourselves. So um, the survey, for instance, if we want to do something, something along those lines in terms of, uh, do we need to come back to council to get permission to do that first? Um, some of the things in the strategic plan um, talk about more actions that the committee could do. And um, I don't know, Krista, do you wanna to add to that? Because the strategy is yours, not mine, as in council. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess looking at the definition, we might need to dig into the Legalities. legal definition, but the intent was around the new strategy really emphasizes where the TAC can be helpful in moving our region forward. And so, especially in my mind, if it's things that are approved in the strategy by council that we know we want to move forward, if the committee can help with that, or if it's things that are approved in the budget as what things we want to move forward for the year, the committee could also be helpful in actually moving those forward as well. That's my thought. Councilor Gurwin. So I guess that was part of my concern because tonight we're gonna to be asked to approve the strategy. Um, so in conversation of moving that forward that strategy is huge and there's a lot of actions associated with it i'm not prepared at this time to vote in favor of an action that has a financial consequence that i don't know about it right and the same as like once this strategy is approved does that mean we're approving all the actions in that or is that just a high-end approval and if we are approving all the actions in that then are we approving for the TAC to take some of those responsibilities. Like I'm just not clear on where that's headed. Um, so my perspective of it is that the if the strategy is approved, then generally we would be moving in that direction. Although the action items are um, outlined as kind of must, should, could, mm -hmm. right? Because realistically, unless there's a significant amount of time and money put towards, we may not be able to accomplish every single one of them in each year. So, right. which is, that's yeah. how I so felt there would that, have to be. Like we would, I'm wondering if we would approve the strategy, like just overall, and then yearly would we would be approving the actions based on whatever considerations that we take in, into play because like it's huge and it's a five-year plan. So I don't know that we can approve a budgetary commitment for year five now. And so that was where I was headed with the action too. Like I'm not approving something tonight doesn't say just because it says in the plan that the TAC should do it. I'm not ready to approve that now. I think we need to have more discussions as to where it's going. Councillor Penny, I, I my thought of it for sure. I, when it came to financial consequence to those actions, I would have felt that that would still have to come back to council each time, right? I mean, we've had, as far as I've seen, there's been many strategic plans laid out by council over the years that 
everything didn't get fulfilled, right? So whatever happens with this going forward, obviously there's going to be financial consequence. I would have assumed we'd have to get approved for each one. I don't think that we're cutting a blank check basically to just make it happen. That's That was my understanding of it. Yeah, good. Because I just going from advisory. So I would think that the way it was happening in my head is that year one would go back, like overall the TAC has approved the, the, the plan. And then year one, it goes back to the TAC and says, yeah, we agree with this action, that action. We see how this could happen, that can happen. We could do this, you could do that. Come back to council, we all approve, and then we move forward. So if that's the way that that's intended to be, then I would be okay with it. Uh, so, Mr. Berry, there's um, there were several items that Mrs. Vandersteen had uh, that she wanted uh, council to look at and to to make changes to, and and uh, the idea is is that uh, we'll ask administration to do that as well as come back uh, with maybe a more clear definition around um, an action committee versus an advisory committee uh, to inform council. Um, I think it, uh, do you need a motion for that? I was looking for a report. <clears throat> Sorry, if you're looking for a report, yes, please. Um, that said, council can, if you wish, also pass based on the information. So it's entirely up to council if you wish to pass the resolutions based on what you know. If you want more information, we can absolutely bring it back. I would like to see administration come back with some more information around what Ms. Vandersteen is proposing here. Uh, I'll ask for a seconder for that motion. Seconded by Councillor Penny. Any discussion on this? Councillor Penny, any questions? Is there specific things that you want to highlight that well, you'd want staff to look at? Mrs. Um, Vandersteen had a list of things that she wanted us to look at. And I think the appropriate thing to do is to send it to staff, uh, get them to bring back a report to us so we have something to look at, uh, so we understand the consequences of it. and. Uh, all the implications of it as well. Okay, and I'll, my second. Any other comments? Councillor Gerwin. Would you like to add a timeline? Uh, Mr. Berry, what would be a convenient timeline for that? I'll go through it. Chris on that, because that's where the report most likely is going to come from. So I think based on the discussion, you could probably get one relatively quickly, I think anyway, but. Um, yeah, I think we can pull it together relatively quickly. Uh, one month. Uh, uh, Councillor Andrews. <clears throat> um, there's just a couple of them on here requests, like just like the writing letters and stuff. I, do you want those included in the report as well? Because I, I would be confident in making a motion on a couple of these requests. I see that there is a, a number of items here. For instance, approvals in January, um, uh, changing to an action-oriented committee, uh, recruitment uh, uh, going on through the year. And I think there was a few more that Ms. Vandersteen came, uh, came to us with. So I was hoping that they would look at uh, all these issues and come back to council. I have no problem uh, with, along with you, Councillor Andrews, about um, a letter asking for tax breaks for tourism, but I think we can do this all in one report and, and then council can look at it and have a more fulsome view of it. Councillor Penny. Just to get back to one of those requests, um, I'm really sorry I didn't talk to you earlier. We did talk, and I didn't talk about one thing, the hot springs. I've got, I'll confirm the information that I received today, early tomorrow, and then I'll, I'll share it. I don't want to say it here if it's not true, but I think it's, it's good news. So. Very well. Uh, so there's a motion on the floor. Uh, can I ask all those in favor, please? Carried, and Councillor Roper, he's in favor as well. So that motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mrs. Vandersteen, for your report. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to meet the council. Ms. Vandersteen, administration report number six, draft Northern Rockies tourism strategy and action plan. Yeah, so thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we kind of touched into this already, but there was the presentation that Bannekin provided um, in December, just before Christmas, which went over the strategy into a little bit more detail. So I didn't want to duplicate those efforts as I know all of our time is valuable. Um, 
But then moving forward, I did want to bring the strategy back to see if council would be willing to approve it. Um, and then as part of approving it, there are two other strategies that are currently sitting on our shelves. So I did want to highlight those that if we approve this strategy, those would um, become reference materials versus active strategies because we need to be working on one that was part of our struggles in previous years is that we've had multiple documents and didn't know really where, which to pull what from. Um, and then I did include in the analysis, just a highlight of some of the actions that were really targeted towards business development and brainstorming, because that came up in our last discussion. And then I threw in just to see what council's thoughts were. Um, so there is a budget request in the 2022 budget for the tourism strategy implementation year one. So that is currently in the budget, um, the proposed budget, which I believe you guys are going to be looking at in more detail soon um, for 22,500. So those are the things that I kind of pulled out of the first year of the strategy that I thought would really see value in having some budget to them. So that kind of speaks to the comments around the budget and kind of going, this is just asking for some of the items for year one. Um, and then for, there's a $10,000 piece of that, which is for the first action in the year one, which is to develop and roll out a post COVID-19 resident engagement program. So it's fairly broad. Um, right now because we need to figure out what will work best for Fort Nelson, but really to engage residents, get hopefully get some residents out doing like a staycation or where they're helping put some money into these businesses that are unlikely to be seeing international travel quite yet. Um, so I just threw that in as an optional second um, recommendation was to pre-approve that just so that we could get moving on that as we come out of whatever phase of COVID we're in. Any questions? Councillor Gerwing? Um, so you're making reference to a 22,000 um, ask. Where, where, I'm not seeing that. Where is that happening? So the 22,500 is in the actual budget. So oh, there is a link to that page in the proposed 2022 budget. Um, and I'm only asking right now for a $10,000 portion of it. And um, does that make sense? It does make sense, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so um, I didn't know if it was 22,000 plus the 10,000, so okay. Um, so there'd be 12,500 remaining. If okay. I can do math at this hour yeah, on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're so. feeling that you need a pre-approval um, because the budget process is gonna take too long to be effective. So it's gonna be too late if we um, stick to the budget process that we have. It's just, you know, the whole yeah. pre-approval process is very problematic. Yeah. And it's a line that- I don't think it's, 100% necessary that it's pre-approved, but I did want to bring it forward because I think that the earlier we can at very least start planning it. So maybe if council isn't interested in a pre-approval at this stage, but if you can give a bit of a support for starting the planning of it, because um, there is going to be a planning stage to figure out what exactly works here before any money is spent. Um, I, it's just the first action and it's one that I think the TAC could have some meaningful discussion about to determine what that best project is or how it ends up rolling out is my thoughts. Any other questions for Ms. Vandersteen? I have none. Um, somebody may wanna make a motion or option one. Um, yes, I, I think so. Yes, option one, and, and then we will do the second part as well. Um, moved by Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Gerwing. All those in favor? Carried. 
And the second part of the recommendation that a $10,000 budget be pre-approved for the 2022 as part of the tourism uh, strategy implementation year one budget to allow for post COVID-19 resident engagement program to begin prior to final budget approval. Are there any questions from Ms. Vandersteen on this? Very well. Sorry, I wasn't quick enough. I very very well. <laughs> Councilor Penny. What exactly would it look like they asked for then for some planning time, not the actual um, $10,000 approval, then you just want us to approve some person hours? Um, I guess then it would be that council support staff and the TAC starting to develop what this project could look like in preparation for the budget approval. I just don't want to be spinning people's time and wheels if it if it isn't of interest to council. Well, on my end, for sure, it's it's of interest, and I'd want to see us move forward with that. Did that sound like a motion or um, the point? If I was to say what she said <clears throat> without saying it. <laughs> well, Councillor Penny, you could you could just um, you could just say that uh, the second recommendation uh, here that the ten thousand dollar be pre-approved for twenty twenty two as part of the tourism uh, uh, strategy implementation. I'm really I'm I have learned from Councillor Gerwing, and I've taken that to heart very much. I would, the least amount of pre-approvals the better. Right now, especially with this year that we're going into, it seems that the rollout of our yeah. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't want to pre-approve it, but I would want to make sure it gives some staff hours. I would that. second your motion that <clears throat> was first mentioned where, I'm not sure, but. Well, I was still waiting for a response. If it... So the council support um, the TAC and staff pursuing the idea of the um, resident engagement program? Yes. Yes. And the second are for Councillor Penny's motion. Seconded by Councillor Gerwing. All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Administration report number seven, tourism consumer shows for information. Yeah, so I can speak to this one as well. Um, so pre-COVID we did we used to do quite a few consumer shows as part of our tourism marketing. Um, and it really hit um, by having that face-to-face -face contact with people and helping them actually plan. So in the past, when we have done the NRM used to do boosts completely on our own and council would often send a member to participate. And then um, in the last couple of years, we've shifted in their part of co-op marketing, which means that we get a usually a bigger space for less of our own money, as well as a broader reach by partnering with other neighboring communities. So that those co-ops are looking at the three shows that are listed in this report. Um, things are pretty fluid still with COVID-19 and we're hoping to have a little bit of a presence. So some of the shows are significantly smaller down to like one 10 by 10 booth compared to previous years, but just to make sure that North does have a presence. Um, so I just wanted to bring it forward to council and see if there was any counselors that were hopping to go to a consumer show or um, yeah, that's where we're at. Any counselors who'd be interested? Oh, Councillor Andrews. Um, I would be interested if there wasn't limited amount of people, I'm sure our staff can, can have it covered and the uh, conglomerate. Um, I, I see there's only three listed here. And I know in the past, Chris, that you and Jaylene have been to pretty much all of them. Do you think there's anything missed here that has brought great benefit to the municipality prior? Um, so the different shows have changed a little bit year over year. So we used to do um, a sportsman's show, um, which was targeted more towards the hunting demographic. We have um, in recent years, even before COVID, we had started shifting a little bit away from that more towards either the RV or the outdoor adventure shows, um, just because there was concerns about what a hunter necessarily brings in value to the community. 
So the amount of spend that they might have versus somebody that's staying in campgrounds all the time, that sort of thing. Um, and then just the amount of animals in the area and stuff like that. So we have kind of shifted just based on years and demographics that we're targeting. Um, right now, coming out of COVID, the based on our conversations with this um, these co-ops, these two outdoor shows and then the early bird RV show have shown success in the past and are a really good market for who we anticipate will be interested in our area as we come out of COVID and really looking for those outdoor wide open spaces. Um, yeah. Air. Air. <laughs> Councillor Penny. Uh, I attended the last two of these, um, the um, Outdoor Adventure Show in Vancouver and then the Hurley Bird RV Show in Abbotsford just before the world shut down. And I was amazed with uh, the interaction with, with people. I really like the co-op as much as I, at first I really thought that I would want us to, to focus more on the NRM and, and just get our own booth down there and kind of move away. But getting down there and being able to discuss the whole the circle route we talk about, you know, the cast here on Alaska Highway Indy Loop, it really works well for us, but you never know what you're going to get out of these face-to-face -face meetings down there. I spoke to nurses, I spoke to counselors, I, I really wish that I, I tried harder to get their information. I made sure that they had my information and I didn't hear back, but you just never know what's going to come out of these. And I had it, I forget the number now, but at least three or four people I had heard from once you were allowed to move again that at least contacted me just to get an idea of where they should plan to go. So I I, uh, I took that as a big win because it takes a lot for some people usually to reach out to somebody that they only met at a show a year ago and uh, is he really going to, you know, did he really want me to call or, or whatever. So I really see great value in these shows for NRM and I'd, moving forward once we get through this more, I, I see us actually even getting involved more heavily later on but yeah anyway I, I do believe that it brought great value because i was concerned about it even the nrm paying for my flights to the hotel to go down there and attend these things and worried if it was worth it but i definitely feel it was worth it it was the shows were really good for us i think so you're looking for participation in these counselor andrews are you prepared to participate in some of these shows um if they need a body in there i would definitely but i know that with this group there's a lot of people who are more versed in doing it like with the whole golden circle and there is limited availability for people so i just wouldn't want to take somebody's spot but no, i needed i would be willing to go for sure between you and counselor penny i'm sure you could work out something that it would get covered by a counselor is that correct sure we can miss van um yeah i just wanted to clarify as counselor andrew was saying that a counselor isn't mandatory but we wanted to bring it forward and um because we can obviously work with a counselor if it is of their interest so we can work with counselor andrews and thank you mr counselor penny again I'll, I'll say i really think there's value in a council member attending these uh, they were most people i spoke to were pleasantly surprised that a council member was Take an initiative to come down there and speak with them. It, it, it meant something. I mean, um, so I see a great value in it, especially going forward now. It's going to be a, a tough slug coming out of this, but we've got a real opportunity as well because a lot of people think are going to be staying local. So we hit these shows, we get a chance to get these people up here. I notice there does seem to be an awful lot of advertisements on uh, Yukon visiting the Yukon, there is a big push on for that. I even noticed in the United States, some of the networks in the United States are doing quite a bit of promotion to Alaska too. And I think that's nothing good for our, good for our region. Uh, so maybe, um, maybe once COVID-19 is over, maybe the push is gonna be uh, for people to go north and hopefully that's the case. Uh, anything else, Ms. Vanderstein? Very well, received that for information. Do we need a motion though? Um for council to approve um, council attendance at these shows, should they desire? Because I mean, it's spending money. I think we need a motion, right? Mr. Barry, is that already yeah, in the yeah, budget? Myself and Christmas Bur okay. just briefly chatting about it there, and we can bring something back if we have an idea in terms of further money. Um, oh. And um, 
it would come out of the council travel budget, right. which we don't have that account for now. We probably have enough in there to cover it, but right. um, council can pass a resolution and go, we still need to bring back what our cost would be anyway, which can occur during our discussions and we do the preliminary budget discussions too. The council. Oh, okay. Because one I see is in February, so I just mm -hmm. thought, wondered yeah. if you needed a, an approval at least for that one. But it'd be, it'd be, It'd be good, but we don't have, I guess, Chris is a, is a cost to attend. So I think what we did last year, didn't we say we made a motion up to a X amount of dollars or something? And then. Yep, we then do that. Can have, to... Council can absolutely do that. What would be the happy number for that up to? Um, well, why don't we just deal with the first one? And yep. then the other two, we would get more appropriate data or accurate data. So I would make a motion that. Um, Council approve council attendance at the February 17th to 20th early bird RV show, um, not having costs at hand up to a maximum of $5,000. More than enough, I would say. A I'd seconder say that. for that motion. Seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Very well. I'll ask for a motion then to um, pursuant to section 91B of the community charter uh, that we move to a closed meeting. Motion, please. Mo moved by Councillor Andrew, seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor? Carried. I'll recall the special regional council meeting to order. Mrs. McIver, is there anything we can rise to report? Yes, so council passed a resolution to um, move by Councillor Gerwing, seconded by Councillor Penny, to write letters of response to um, the Salvia Terries and um, J.A. Pinto, which are included on the regular agenda for information. Carried unanimously. Thank you. I'll declare the special regional council meeting adjourned.